Previously, I said that if you wanted an Atari computer with extremely large display resolutions, stupidly fast speeds, and insane memory sizes, you needed to use Aronin. So now we're going to find out, was I telling the truth, or was it all porky pies? Let's find out. So, what is Aronim, and how does it differ from emulators like Steam and Atari? Aronim stands for Atari running on any machine. The Aronim website describes Aronim as a software virtual machine similar to VirtualBox or VMware. It's designed for running 32-bit operating systems like TOS, Mint, or Magic, and it's designed to run TOS applications, and it's designed to run on any type of hardware. Aronim is pitched as being the next-gen Falcon replacement, rather than a cycle-exact emulation. Consider it in a similar vein to the hardware-based ST replacements like the Medusa board, which was a TT replacement, and the Medusa Milan, which was the next version of that. Both of these are pretty much as rare as real TTs these days, so a software replacement is very useful. Let's install Aronim. So I sourced my build from a third party site because it has M1 builds available. And I used to always use this site because it kept up to date with the development branch, but the development branch seems pretty stale these days. So downloading the build for the M1, I'm going to open up the DMG file and we see there are three executables, Mac Aronim, Mac Aronim JIT and Mac Aronim MMU. For me, the only usable version is the basic Mac Aronim. The JIT version on other platforms improves execution time using just-in-time compilation. So it converts the 68,000 instructions into native x86 instructions. So if you're using this on an x86-based platform, be it Linux or PC, use the JIT version. And the MMU version, that emulates the memory management unit functionality of the 68040. That's really, really useful in multitasking operating systems like Mint. However, the MMU version comes at the cost of a performance penalty. I'm going to stick with the stock Mac Aronim executable and I'm going to copy it into a temporary folder and we'll move it again in a second. From here, we could create a virtual hard drive and a virtual floppy drive and get to installing software. Well, possibly. You see, Aronim is really difficult to get to grips with. It requires a lot of knowledge and experience to configure it from scratch, unlike say, Hitari or Steam. Now, your mileage may vary on this and you may be an expert in it because often you guys are. <laughs> For me, I think the easiest approach has been to start with a base distribution and develop it from there. Aronim has a kind of a sister project called Afros, and Afros stands for a free operating system. It's a hard drive set up for Aronim, which I guess could be used with other emulators, that boots into FreeMint as an operating system. And Afros's stated goal is to be 100% free and open source. And as such, it uses FVDI as its VDI, replacement, as opposed to the closed source, say, NVDI or Speedo GDOS. It uses XAAES as its AES instead of, say, Magic or Geneva, which are closed source. And it uses Teradesk as its desktop. Now, I think Teradesk started life as a commercial product, but it was subsequently released into the open source domain. So I'm going to download Afros. And I'm going to unzip it. And I'm going to move the contents into my Aronim folder. And I'm also going to move Aronim itself into the Afros folder. I want them all on the same level. So before we proceed, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run Aronim so it creates its default settings folder because we're going to need to crib some lines from it later. So on a Mac, the default config is created in the Aronim underscore files folder, which is stored under documents. And I'm just opening the config file from there and I'm minimizing it because we're going to use that later. If we look in the distribution folder, there are two Windows batch files for executing Aronim. So looking at the non-JIT one, what it's doing is it's running Aronim using the minus C flag to specify a local config rather than the global one. And I want to do the same for my Mac. So let's create a script. We'll call it start. And what we're going to do is we're going to put in it uh, hash pling slash bin slash bash. That just tells it it's a bash script file. And then the command is open minus a Mac Aronim dot app. So that first part is saying run Mac Aronim dot app. You can't just run it because an app on a Mac is not an executable image. It's a folder structure. So we say run that. Minus minus arg says the rest of this, just pass it as an argument to the Mac Aronim app. And we just say minus C, load this config file, and then we give it the full path to the config file. Obviously, as usual, if you're following along at home, your path will differ. Okay, I'm going to save that. I'm going to use the chmod command to make it executable, and then let's run it. Okay, that's looking good, but I'm trapped. 
It says hit the pause button for setup. I don't have a pause button on my keyboard. <laughs> hit left shift plus con left control plus left alt plus the application key. Doesn't work on my machine. Don't have an application key. Or hit the middle mouse button to release capture. And I don't have a mouse. The mouse that I don't have doesn't have a middle button. <laughs> So I'm going to tab out of the application and kill it. So to fix this problem, we need to open the Afros config file and we're going to copy some stuff out of that default config file. So let's maximize that. So we're going to copy the hotkeys section out of the Mac version and into the Afros one. So now on the Mac, we have when we run it, Apple key plus comma will bring up the Aronim settings. And Apple key plus escape will release mouse capture. So you've seen a few tantalizing glimpses of what you're getting here, but I've been getting my config sorted out. So let's see what we have. So I'm going to boot the machine and we're going to go through what's actually happening when we boot it. So first of all, we have Emutos. See, got it right again. The version is straight out source control. So it has a, a version tag with a CVS line in it. It's not an official release. I'm not sure if this is actually a custom build or not. I do recollect reading somewhere that they did some modifications to make direct hardware access better, but I can't find the reference. So perhaps that's not true. So the machine type is marked as Aronim. It's not marked as any official Atari machine. It's its own system, remember? So it's not an Atari Falcon. It's an Aronim. It comes with ST RAM with 14 meg and fast TT RAM with 64 meg ish. Okay, so next up, it loads the DSP driver, the network driver, and yes, if you fiddle with it, you can get this virtual machine onto its internet. A file system driver, the Aronim host file system driver to allow it to access my Max hard drive, the Minix file system driver for Mint, and then it boots into Mint. And then Mint loads the following. Glue stick is the TCP IP layer. Clocky synchronizes the clock. The Magic sound driver, and then the Aronim JPEG library. This is kind of the first place where we get a hint of how fast this machine can be, because what this allows you to do is offload the decoding of JPEGs from the 68000 emulator onto my Max M1 processor. So obviously that's going to be lightning fast. So next up, we have FVDI boots, and there's a little menu there that allows you to set options. Just bear in mind that three is 1400 by 1050 resolution. And then once we complete the boot, we're into the desktop. Before we go any further, what I want to do is do another reboot and find out what pressing that three key does during boot. Right, pixels, lots of them. So checklist time. I promised extremely large display resolutions and I think that's a tick. Next, speed. Afros comes with the Kronos benchmark installed by default. So let's run that and get a benchmark. And while it's running, let's see what it's actually doing. So it runs six sets of tests. So it tests processor speed, floating point unit speed, memory and video bus, VDI, disk, and 3D stroke OpenGL. And the results are benchmarked against three other systems. These were physical hardware systems, the PM8600 Magic Mac version 2.2, the CT60-100-25, and the Hades 060. So the Hades 060 was a hardware motherboard that could take a 68060 processor, way faster than the original Falcon. Now the results, it gives a value as a percentage of the PM8600 score. So that's always the 100% value. So if any system is at less than 100%, it's slower than the PM8600. And if it's above 100%, it's faster. Now notice that in the categories on the screen there, the PM8600 is not always the fastest in each test. It just usually is. And that's why I think why they picked it as the reference. So let's look at the results. So Aronim is faster than the replacement hardware in all categories. So it's from 138% of baseline speed for processor, 11,878% in floating point, 1,400% in memory and bus speed, 1,607 of baseline for VDI, 4,196 in disk access, and finally, 2,824% of baseline in 3D and OpenGL. It's worth bearing in mind that I'm running Aronim which will use all the horsepower available to it from the host machine. And I'm running it on an M1 Pro MacBook Pro. That's a fairly fast machine. Now, as a comparison for PC use, I run the same tests on my gaming PC, which is a Ryzen 9 3950X, has 16 cores, 32 hyperthreads, and has an RTX 3090 graphics card. And I got lower results. So I guess the whole thing probably comes down to single threaded performance. But be aware, your results will differ from mine. But I think you can guarantee in all cases with any relatively recent laptop of fairly low spec, it will still be better than the hardware replacements were. 
So I thought we'd have a bit of fun and compare it to the original Falcon and TT. So I ran the same Kronos tests on Hatari under my maxed out TT and Falcon settings that I created in the last video on emulating all Atari systems. As you can see, the TT outperforms the Falcon in all areas, particularly in hard drive access. But I think the TT was using SCSI, whereas the Falcon is using IDE, which is probably the reason. However, how do they stack up against Adenim? Well, that's kind of sort of what we expected, but it's pretty impressive, isn't it? Right, checklist time. I promised you stupidly fast speed, so that's another tick. Next, we come on to memory. I mean, this is an easy one. Let's edit our config file and set the fast RAM size to 1024, or a gigabyte of memory. And in the boot screen, we can see a gigabyte of memory. And in the About dialog in Teradesk, we see uh, it can't cope. It can't display it, but it does handle it. So for our checklist, we now have insanely large memory sizes, check and double check. As promised, Aronim has delivered extremely large display resolutions, stupidly fast speeds and insane memory sizes. That sounds like an advert, doesn't it? We haven't covered much of what was in Afros, you know, like networking and Mint, for example, because the main thrust of this episode is Aronim itself. So do I love it? And is all future Atari content on the channel going to be based around it? No. For all its benefits, there are some drawbacks. And for now, they prevent me from using it. These are full screen usage. I like to immerse myself in the Atari world. So when I run Atari, for example, I run it in full screen. However, added in when I run it in full screen on my Mac, flickers. And that is just annoying. Next thing, mouse capture. I mean, this actually purely sucks, to be honest. I seem to need to constantly release the mouse capture and regain it again to get the Atari mouse and the Mac mouse to synchronize. And that just makes it kind of unusable. Now I'm sure both of these can be potentially fixed by installing drivers or tweaking the config. But this brings me to the last and the biggest drawback for me, which is complexity. Arinim is complex. Getting anything working is a bit of a chore. The biggest problem is that the config is spread all over the place. It's in the app config. It's in the applications config dialog. And then there's the config file, which we've edited a couple of times in this video. But there are also various drivers and auto folder apps that make Aronim what it is. And they have their configs spread all over the system. Some are in the auto folder, some are in the root folders, others are just kind of hidden in plain sight. None of this is easy to find and it's not documented too well. I mean, actually some things are overly documented if you get my drift, but confusing to read. I don't want to come across all salty because I really appreciate what this is and what it could be for me. But for now, I'm going to stick to Hattori and I'm going to spend some time in the background playing with and researching add it in more thoroughly and then we'll see where we go from there however that's all for now thanks for watching and i'll talk to you soon